one right It's done. All right. <laughs> She knows. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if I could have everybody's attention, we will call the October board meeting to order and welcome everybody. Kind of a light crowd tonight. And they're going to all miss the most important meeting of the year, the most exciting meeting of the year, and report to the public. So, I guess they can all watch it. There you go. Um, Celebrations, Mr. Williams. We do have some celebrations. Um, I would like to uh, announce that our tennis team had a very successful conference tournament. Our boys team finished second, girls team finished third, and we had a, a conference champion, Lucas Junkerman, won our boys single 5A West Conference title. And then we had Ola Los was runner-up in girls' singles, and a team, Brooklyn Williams and Julia Tron, placed fourth in girls' doubles. So I wanted to tell you about that. And then I've got some choir celebrations. I uh, did not invite all of these students here this evening, but there's quite a few. Uh, all region performers for 2021 from Salem Springs High School in Soprano 1. We had Molly Self in 14th. Mia Anchado, 25th, Olivia Moody, 2nd alternate, Soprano 2, Hannah Green, 9th, Sierra Horner, 15th, London Omo, 16th, Allison McWilliams, 40th, Kate Kelly in Alto 1 was 9th, Mary Shepard, 27th, Caitlin Ross, 31st, Ashley Drake, 3rd alternate, Alto 2, Verna Labatod, 16th, Emma McLeod, 28th, Shaden Owen, 30th, Emma Hoskins, 38th, Tenor one, Doc Dowdy, fourth, Brian Duncan, eighth, Grayson Manning, twentieth, tenor two, Pranay Lore, fifteenth, Connor Clayton, sixteenth, base one, Carlos Zamora, seventh, Caden McHaney, twentieth, and base two, Reese Edwards, second, and Denny Diaz, third, alternate. So that was at All Region Choir. Uh, that's a good number for us, uh, a, a very strong number for us to have All Region. And then I would like to celebrate our marching band as well. They went to the uh, 2021 War Eagle Classic Marching Invitational, and they were named as Grand Champions. That is a big deal for our band. Uh, so congratulations to our marching band. Very big accomplishment. And that is... Clap for absolutely. Yeah. 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 A lot of good things happen. Mm -hmm. Um, before we move on in the agenda, I would, uh, I don't want to, that was a celebration, I don't, I don't want to put a downer, but I, I would like to um, uh, let you know that one of our own passed away this last week, uh, Kathy Cox, cafeteria worker at Northside Elementary, uh, passed away at St. Vincent's last week. She was 53 years old and will be greatly missed at Northside Elementary. I'd just like to join the rest of the Salem Springs School District in honoring her legacy and keeping her family, friends, co-workers, and students in our thoughts and prayers. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Patrick, comments and patrons? Uh, none this evening. All right. Danny, let the minute show that we have an established quorum. Yes, I probably should get a little closer to mine. And we need to approve the minutes of the regular board meeting of September 9th, special board meetings of September 9th and 17th and 27th and October 4th. We've been busy. You have. I would make a motion that we approve the minutes from all of these meetings that are listed. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Now we'll move to reports, and Mr. Wiggins is up first. I have a few things to report. Um, first off, our school board went to Northside Elementary today to have lunch with uh, Northside students and faculty, and then tour some of the new parts of the building over there. Uh, many of some of them we'd already seen in past visits, but uh, they had not seen the new administrative offices over there. And so we had an enjoyable lunch. Uh, Got hugs from a few kindergartners and pre-K kids, 
and uh, got to see the, the new parts of the building over there. Went in a few classrooms and got to observe some, some good things going on there. So that was uh, very fun for me. Uh, also like to talk about the fact that we have had two board trainings since uh, our last regular meeting. One was Fall Leadership Conference at uh, Rogers. Uh, Mr. Lamb and I went to that. And uh, then Tuesday night of this week, we had a regional meeting at Greenland High School. And uh, Grant and Mr. Lamb and I attended that one. So Some if, of us attended virtually. Oh, I'm sorry. And Connie <laughs> attended both of those virtually, uh, correct? Actually, you did too. I didn't get to attend last night, but no, Tuesday. No, the other night. Okay. Or Wednesday. And so, two. So. If any of you would like to make a comment on either of those conferences, that would be great. I felt like it was very heavy information. It was. If I remember right. Um, I know we talked about uh, redistricting and we talked about a whole lot of new laws the other night at Greenland. Um, had some interesting information at, uh, at, the, at the leadership conference, including a, a presentation from the FBI gentleman who didn't show up until late. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but it had some very, yeah. very good information. That was and I, That was very yes. eye-opening. Oh, my. Um, Tuesday night while we were at Greenland for the uh, regional meeting, two of our board members were recognized as outstanding board members. Connie Matchell and Travis Jackson were both honored that night and recognized as outstanding board members. So congratulations <laughs> yeah, to you. That concludes my report. All right. Any other comments from the board about our trainings? That anyone wants to make before we move on? I'd say the state does a great job really of are. determining what boards need and um, and the presentations are always really good. Much better than it used to be. They've mm -hmm. raised the game. Not the raise Very the timely information. Mm -hmm. and, and they're all conscious of our time too and try to get in, get mm -hmm. done, and get out. Yeah, they were good. Both of them. I enjoyed both. All right, that brings us to October's special report to the public. Amy Carter. Hopefully all of this will work. You said earlier this was the most exciting night. It is. So, every year. <laughs> every year. So it is time for the report to the public. Um, over the last couple of years, we've tried to Can stream. Can I stop you just a minute? Sure. I say that in jest, but it is important that we do this. It is. Yes, yeah, <laughs> So we've tried to streamline it over the last um, couple of years. Um, you'll note down at the bottom, we have 10-4, and it says 20. I think we forgot our 21 on the end of that. <laughs> the next slide but, is 21. Okay, the next one. So... Um, get there so we did do um, the data we collected came from um, a little time ago about a week ago so just so um, we're aware of that the first piece of information is accreditation and so that is something we need to show our board every year that we have schools that are each accredited and all of our schools show that um, there is a monthly report that principals receive and then district office receives that and then if there are any red flags which really come up as little red check marks then we have 30 days to address those and then um, hopefully turn those into green and that's what we strive for throughout the year so that's our accreditation piece our next piece is statistical data and um, we did a three-year history so that you could compare how we've transitioned up and down in population as far as enrollment and we had a downward trend last year but we are now on an upward trend again of um, enrollment pieces when we look at our um, kind of our subcategories through here our english learners We've been 18, 16, and now we're back up into the 18s. You will notice a little bit of, um, well, it's kind of a 10% one, they're in low income. But as Mr. Wiggins has um, mentioned numerous times over the last year and a half, that um, 
a lot of our documentation, our families aren't necessarily having to turn in because all of our kids are eating free and reduced lunch and things like that. And so this plays a role in that percentage. We have special education and GT, and again, you'll notice that those numbers are pretty much holding steady across the board in our three-year trend. Any questions or comments about that? Okay. Then we just tried to, we all love charts and graphs and colorful things. So this is our demographic data um, reflected in a pie graph. And we can clearly see that Hispanic Latino and our whites are our largest race and ethnicity groups, but we do have small percentages in several other categories as well. Just a minute, can you yes. go back to that one a minute? Taking your own, not that one, the next one. There, I'm just trying to. Thank you. Okay. So the next slide, we um, went by building, and because we still um, have an interest in how many students we have in our virtual versus our on-site campus, we went ahead and did a little breakdown of that. You will see our virtual is rolling around that 115 mark, so that is significantly lower than last year, which was hovering above 600 at that point. Um, but times have changed somewhat, but we do still have an interest in our virtual academy, as we've talked about in numerous other meetings. It is not something that we want to go away. We do realize that we have a population of students and families that are best served in that capacity, capacity and so we want to continue that and continue to grow and nurture that for our children and families that it is the best mode of education. Um, and then the other roster is just our on-campus kiddos, and so those numbers pretty much hold accurate to where they have been in previous years. Our next focus, um, we have our big three. This is something Mr. Wiggins initiated in year one, and so we are holding steady to those three areas. Science of reading, of course we have new teachers and staff members that need continual training um, to receive that. And then we are also supporting um, some of our teachers that have asked or wanted to go back through certain days of that training, not necessarily all six days per se, but maybe they want to learn more about the vocabulary, morphology work or something. And so we do continually support that in our buildings. We also have response to intervention, um, which we call RTI2. And in RTI, Thankfully, all of you approved in the spring for each of our campuses to have academic interventionists. So we now have literacy and math interventionists as well as behavioral interventionists that are there to support our teachers and faculty with um, students that have learning gaps or behavioral gaps that have kind of come to light over these last 18 to 20 months. So <clears throat> that again is part of one of our big three. And then our last one is professional learning communities or PLCs. And again, that has been in place for multiple years in the district, but we are continually supporting that collaboration among our faculty, um, whether that be teacher teams or grade level teams, so that they can continue to grow and nurture in their own professional learning as a unit. And so we just wanted to kind of give a quick update on our continuing process of our big focus areas. So the next piece of information is um, public to you all now. It will actually be made public in the state tomorrow. So this is, you'll see it says preliminary ESSA school index data. And so when we're looking at these, these are pretty and colorful and the next few slides are as well. But the black bar 
on each of the graphs represents the state average. And so that blue or purple color kind of depends on your shading there, but that blue or purple is what we represent as Siloam Springs. And so you can see that um, our blue and purple shade exceeds that black line master in every building. Some of them are a little closer to the black line than others, but we are at least meeting or exceeding that state average as a whole within those um, campuses. So now what we um, put in your slides, which I know you have as well, we just did the breakdown for each of our buildings. And it's not that we had to do this, the state provides it. So I'm not necessarily going to read each building's percentages, but I do want you to kind of understand and this is a good example. On north sides, we have an RV there under our, these are our six subcategories they break into, under the black African American. That just means that we do not have a large enough population in that building to measure that. And so that number is 10. So at north side, that doesn't apply. You will see on one of the slides later, it does apply at a different location. Then um, Hispanic, Latino, white, English learners, economically disadvantaged, and then students with disabilities. So those make up our six. And again, the black bar represents the state, and then the colorful shade represents Siloam Springs. And so Northside doesn't have an accountability assessment as far as our true SS score. So Northside and Allen both receive part of their score and graphing from how Southside performs and that's vice versa. So it's how they feed into our third and fourth grade. So <clears throat> any questions over Northside or what we see as far as the graphs before we keep moving building to building? I will remind you guys the ESSA index is something that Kelly has in the past gone very extensively into how it's figured. A large part of it is our test scores, but then there's a whole lot of other factors that factor into that as well. Mm -hmm. And we decided not to include that big explanation this time. We've done that before, but if you need more information, we would be happy to get that for you later. So as we move through each slide, again, we're going to look for the black bar of where the state is, but we also want to look at where we are holistically um, across the board and make sure that we as a district are offering the support pieces that we need or teachers need to be able to do their prominent jobs that they have of teaching our littles. So <coughs> Alan, again, um, I did click the Allen, didn't I? Yes. Okay, so um, again, in the one category, we don't have enough to actually count because we need 10 or more. So you will see that we are holding steady with the state averages. And some of them, again, right on the line or just right above it. We're counting that, especially when we hear and we know about our gaps in learning that our kids have had over the last 18 months, and especially our littles in learning how to read and how to function in a school building, um, then we are holding steady in that regard. Now, when we click to South Side, again, we have one category that we don't have 10 or more. But this is um, one of our first areas where we see that our black bar or our district percentage may fall just shy of that black um, mark in the state average. So when we look at this, the Hispanic, Latino, English learners um, and the white students, they, those are our three areas that are falling right below the state average. And so when we think about that, we think, okay, that's their first testing year as a third grader. That always plays into it, but then how or what are we doing to support that? So we now have, again, thanks to you, we have 
um, an ESOL instructional coach facilitator. We also have a SPED instructional facilitator that we've added. And then for our English learners, we have new curriculum, which is EL Achieve and Dr. Carter, Dr. Leanne Carter, her and her team investigated a couple of different curriculum products last spring, and then we purchased that. So this is their first year to begin that. Some of our other districts in our region have been using this um, previously and have had success. And so we're hoping over a period of the next two to five years that we will start seeing those significant gains um, like some other districts have seen. So we do have some things in place to help with what we're seeing in we're barely meeting that state average or just shy of it somewhat. Um, when we go to intermediate school, now we'll see this is one of our buildings where we did have a subgroup for our black African Americans. And again, this is one of those areas where we did not meet the state average. So as that building begins, like this data is really fresh. Principals have been sent this data, but like I said earlier, this is not public knowledge until now that I'm saying this here live for people to hear, <laughs> but it will become public across the state tomorrow. So again, this is where teachers and principals, interventionists, the instructional coaches can really dig into their data and see who are in the categories and what do we need to do or how do we address learning deficiencies that certain groups of our kids may have. And again, there are some great successes in some of our other areas. Um, students with disabilities across our campuses thus far have been meeting or exceeding that black bar, which is a good thing for any building that we want to see and make sure that we're having all students learn and reach what they can. So Amy, is this a compilation of math and literacy? Mm -hmm. So do we know which one is they're struggling with more? Well, in the building level, yes, they do. So they would be able to break down by student and subject area and then domain. So it, within math, it would break into the math domains and they would be able to see student data sure. related to that. So overall, what are you seeing? Which one is the struggle? It depends on the building again. Okay. So um, measurement comes up in quite a few. Um, when we think about intermediate and then middle, um, a lot of times it's algebraic thinking and um, so it's more math than literacy. Well, it, it in yes, in some, but then in literacy, writing has played a big piece in deficits. And when we think about um, the last year and a half, writing was still occurring, but writing had to occur in a different manner because it was digital and not paper pencil product and so our writing scores also showed a little bit of a hit in the literacy piece. The good news is our reading scores across the board have increased to the point where I believe we are at or above state average in all at, all, at all grade levels which was a goal for us three years ago. <clears throat> okay, middle school, again, we're looking at the black bar, or do we have an RV, which again we do, meaning we don't have enough students in that category. And so again, when we look, a couple of our categories are right below that state margin. But again, we have put some things in place to help support and nurture that. And hopefully over time, those gaps of instruction will um, close. And we will see um, a closer piece to that state average or even exceeding it like we do in many other categories. And then high school is our last building. And when we look at this, again, we look at the um, black bar of where we are in most all areas. We are right there or exceeding um, the black bar in, again, all six categories. So 
yes, when we look at some things, we may think, oh, that's not quite high enough. We have high standards in Siloam, but we are working and we're striving to achieve what we can and we're overcoming our obstacles and challenges every day that are put in front of us. So this concludes our report to the public, but do you have any more questions or comments that I can answer or even any of the ladies from our CO2 team that helped create this? Any sense how, on how we're doing compared to Northwest Arkansas? Well, since this data has not been made public, we've not been able to run that comparison. But after it's all sure. public tomorrow, we will be able to get into the MySchool Info database and be able to pull some comparisons and see how we relate to schools our size sure. outside of our region, as well as our regional 16 that we share our educational co-op with. Anything else? It's good then. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Interesting stuff. Thank you for getting that together so quickly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Appreciate it. So the report to the public is something that we are required to do by law every year. And the law is very vague on what it has to be or what it should be. It tells us that we have to uh, uh, address the accreditation status of each of our schools, which was the very first slide. Mm -hmm. And it tells us that we have to address progress toward our goals and objectives. So that's the, the purpose of all of the information on the ESSA scores. That is the best indicator of our overall goals and objectives as a district is where we fall on that statewide indicator. So that's how we kind of narrowed that down this year to what we were presenting to you all. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mr. Patrick. All right. I wanted to uh, take a quick moment and update you on the progress being made on the new administration building. So uh, we started two weeks ago clearing that land if you've driven by the property you've seen that uh, uh, Randall and, and our maintenance crew have worked really hard trying to get some land cleared out. Some of it totally cleared and then some of it thinned so that our survey crew could start this past Monday. It saved us about $5,000 by Randall's crew getting out there and getting some of that cleaned out so that the survey crew could get out there and do that. It's not complete as far as the clearing of the land obviously but they made a huge dent in it and now we've pulled them back to now that we've gotten all this rain they have been back to mowing until the last few days so but they'll be back out there and we'll get that done <clears throat> like I said the survey started on Monday should be done the weather's kind of played a role it'll be done sometime next week and uh, also this week we've uh, we approved our uh, geotech survey company we uh, had been waiting on a third bid that third bid came back at significantly less than the first two with actually better timelines on reporting than the first two companies and uh, obviously they're reputable and, and they we approve that and i expect them to be out there pulling some geotech samples sometime late next week depending on how soft the ground is so we're making a lot of headway uh moving down that road to getting started i met with the architect earlier this week and we talked more about the needs in the buildings this is after i had went back for uh and revisited with all the people that'll be in that building and what making sure that we had everything that was needed when we built it as well as thinking about future growth because as mr wiggins has said multiple times this will be a building that'll last the district for many, many years to come, and we need to make sure that not only do we have some short-term growth area, but a way for the building to be added onto if need be down the road years to come. So all of those things are playing a factor, but I really feel good about the plan. Uh, it's coming together, and hopefully in the next couple of months, we'll have some more specific detail, some basic layout stuff that maybe I can show you guys. Do I have any questions on that? this time 
All right, and the last thing I did want to mention, I want to, as we've talked as an administration team, this is, you know, this has been really a difficult two years working through COVID. And some there, I just want to say thank you to our staff, specifically some people that often don't get recognized. Our administrative assistants, our, our food service workers, our custodians, our maintenance people, our bus drivers, uh, you know, nurses, our, our tech staff, that has put all this technology together for us so we can teach kids remotely when necessary. That's a huge undertaking. They've taken and they've totally transformed our district in the last two years to be able to do those things that Amy just reported on on how well we're doing based on this under the circumstances. So those people don't always get a shout out, and and I just want to tell them thank you that they are very much appreciated, sure. and uh, we know it's been a difficult time and it's difficult for everybody. But we wanted to say thank you to them, and I wanted to do that here in open public. All right. Thank you. Thank you for that. All right, we'll move to action items, and first up will be to approve the September financials. Yeah, we'll be excited to know. I don't have a whole lot to say. Um, <laughs> it is September, the end of September, which puts us one fourth of the way through our school year already. Um, things are, after doing the budget a couple weeks ago, not a lot has really happened. Um, if you look at our local collections, our local collections are actually down about $185,000 compared to where we were this time last year. Um, as I tried to, as I spoke about that in our budget meeting, it's hard to predict how those ups and you know ups and downs are going to go. So um, right now we're just a little bit down, nothing to worry about. Um, teacher salary payments are right on schedule as um, we would expect them to be. There is one small tweak that I have made to our budget since you have. Um, approved it and it's on the very last page it's our building fund i uh, got our totals from our foundation to let me know how much money they expected to uh, give to our building fund and they expect to give us about forty thousand dollars this year i did not have that information at the time that i presented you all with the budget so i have added that here and that's all i have Where is that at, did you say? It's on the very last page, page in the building fund oh. revenue. It's not the last page. Oh. It's 11, page 11, I think. Maybe. Just a footnote, today, October 15th, property taxes are due. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Yes, they are. Or tomorrow. Is it tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. So. I was like, what? Yeah, I'm checking to make sure you're better. <laughs> get out, Grant, get out. Don't want to be in the news, okay. uh -huh. Thank you. Okay, make yep. a motion to accept the September financials as printed. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And summer hire list. <laughs> this, we think this is our last one. There's only two people on this one, and um, our tech department has requested that these two individuals continue to um, install some new cabling and things in our school district and various buildings. Um, it is actually by having these two individuals continue working on this project, it's it's a third of what an outside company would cost us. So we would much rather pay that to our people than an outside person. So I would ask that you would approve, hopefully, the final summer hire list of this year. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And now approve community service learning community partner application. Our high school students have the opportunity to learn to uh, earn service learning credit, and uh, we have an application here from the city of Siloam to be a uh, community partner in our community service learning uh, at the high school. And so this would allow them to our students to work uh, in conjunction with the city of Siloam Springs as volunteers and earn some community service hours. 
And so I would recommend that we approve this application uh, from the city to be a partner with us on community service learning. Motion to approve. Yeah. Go ahead. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Minibus purchase. So uh, as, as you may know, we are, uh, everybody in around the country, Northwest Arkansas is, is no different than anybody else. And in Siloam, we're no different. Even though we are fully staffed at this time in buses, we don't have a lot of extra uh, bus drivers. So we have a lot of s trips, small trips that we take. Uh, last year, year before last, excuse me, we bought a mini bus. That gave us two in our fleet. These mini buses are, fi are 15 passenger buses and they do not require a CDL to drive. So a club sponsor, our tennis coach, you know, anybody that doesn't have a CDL but has small has a small group that needs to go somewhere, they can take these on a trip. And we don't have to pull a bus driver off a route to go take them on a trip somewhere. So what uh, we're struggling right now with trying to get kids across Northwest Arkansas specifically on our short trips. And so this buying this mini bus at this point, I know it's not something we had, I originally thought we would need in our budget, but I really think this would help alleviate some issues with our transportation department. And uh, so I have this vendor, the same vendor we used last time is a member of our of TIPS. Some people call there's TIPS and TAPS and, and the, they're a member of the TIPS, which means we don't have to bid this out they're already in the uh, procurement system with the government. And so they have a set price and that price is $65,500 for a bus. Um, and so I would like to recommend that we buy this. And if we, if you approve it, we would probably have this bus in our fleet before the end of December. Is there any questions? Yes, sir. Question. Where does this sixty-five thousand come from out of budget? Well, it wasn't in my original proposal, but I came back before she brought the well, budget to you. Hmm. So we put it in. We, we did figure it in, but it where wasn't is, in my where original. Is what category? I guess it's what. In transportation. It's in transportation. Yes, sir. No. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. And that brings us to executive session for the purpose of hiring. So I guess we shall excuse ourselves briefly. Maybe.
Sorry, I got hungry. Yes, I'm really not sure what that is, but okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna act like I, I'm gonna act like okay. I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll call ourselves back into open session and let me start juggling these supplements and stuff. Um, first, we need to accept resignations. Have two resignations, uh, licensed resignations for this evening. Jason Carter, Child Nutrition Director, has done a fantastic job for us. Uh, sad to see him go. And Barbara Beth, PB House, High School English Language Arts. I would recommend that we accept those two resignations. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And I'd like to just publicly thank Jason Carter for all the all the work he's done on building that program up and the summer program and all the stuff, yes. the extra stuff that he did. He truly had a heart for kids. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. and wish him all the best. So now, item G, hire. Uh, it says hire following licensed staff. Um, this is not a certified position, but uh, I, I felt it needed to be. An action item because it's a it's a management spot or administrative spot. So in Jason's uh, former position, I would recommend that we hire Elizabeth Charme. Is that correct, Jason? I mean, uh, Shane, Elizabeth Charme as our new child nutrition director. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, sick leave. We have a request uh, for emergency sick leave. Uh, Janet Moore and uh, information is in your packet. She meets the requirements of the policy. I would recommend that we approve that. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Now transfers in. We have a dozen, it looks like, yep. uh, transfers in. Three transfers in from Springdale, Colton Horner, 11, Brandon Horner, age 14, Sierra Horner, age 16. And nine transfers in from Gentry, Peyton Garrett, nine, Jacob Simmons, nine, Tabitha Simmons, 13, Jonathan Sierra, 17, Davin Schlund, 15, Thien Long, eight, New Long, 13, Brianna Stockton, eight, and Sophia Stockton, five. I would recommend that we approve all of those transfers in. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Now some out. We have five total out, uh, four to Gentry, Emily, Thomason, Emily Thompson, 15, Emma Ponder, seven, Chloe Ponder, nine, and Landon Ponder, Zion Whitaker uh, transfer out to Springdale, age six. I would recommend that we approve those five transfers out. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Brings us to other business. Other business. We have, let me turn back there. We have, an Arkansas Department of Education Annual Equ Equity Compliance Report. Uh, Amy Sanchez, wave at us, Amy. <laughs> Amy is uh, our equity coordinator, and so Amy has submitted this. This is something we have to submit. It's kind of like our assurance documents uh, that says we are doing what we are supposed to do. This is with respect to civil rights and equity. And so I would ask that, uh, Amy, would you do you have anything to add to what I just said? Okay, I would ask that you all approve this compliance document for us to send into the department. So moved to approve this document, the uh, equity document. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. I am going to. Uh, Got a couple of more action items, but I'm going to skip those for, for right now. Uh, I'm going to go down to classified transfers, some things that I'm just wanting to inform you about. Uh, classified transfers, Sandra Mackey is going from Allen Computer Lab 
to special ed due process Medicaid billing. Uh, Lily Polina is going from Northside Pre-K Para to Allen ESL Para. We have several classified resignations. Uh, Gurley Doherty, Food Service, Abby Olenek, Southside Special Ed Aid, Gerald McDonald, Southside Aid, Nisha Briggs, Southside Special Ed Aid, Sina Knudsen, Knudsen uh, Northside Aid, Ken Bollinger, Transportation. And we have several hires classified. Jessica Gilman, Southside Para, Brandy Bro, Southside Special Ed Para, Pamela Potarf, Northside Pre-K Para, Sarah Farman, Northside Kindergarten Classroom Aid, and Amber Schilling, High School Special Ed Para. And then I will go back to uh, a couple of last uh, um, items that you all need to uh, vote on. First one is, let me find my place here. I have received a letter of resignation from one of our board members. So I will read the letter to you all. September 20th, 2021, School Board President Brian Lamb, I regret to inform you that I will be resigning from the Salem Springs School Board effective at the end of the regular board meeting October 14th, 2021, so tonight. I have enjoyed my time on the board, but because of personal issues, I feel the need to submit my letter of resignation at this time. Serving on the Salem Springs School Board has been one of the highlights of my career in education. This is a great board, and all members care deeply about the students, faculty, and staff in our district. And it has been my pleasure to serve the community as part of this board under your leadership. All blessings, Dr. Connie Matchell. Um, I don't want to accept this resignation, but I don't know that I really have a choice. Um, I would like to say a few things about Connie uh, before we uh, vote to let her go. Connie has been a blessing to this school district for a long time in a lot of ways. And she spent 31 years in public education, 29 of which she was working for the Salem Springs School District. She taught for us. She was an administrator for us. She was a building principal for us. She was our curriculum director when she retired. Uh, she spent five years at John Brown University as the director of teacher education programs and graduate teacher programs. And uh, a lot of our teachers that work for us today came through her programs out there, and we are better for it. She has been on our school board for some four plus years, a little over four years, and she is currently the secretary of our school board. And she is a fine lady and a good friend, and she will be missed on this board. But I do recommend that we approve that resignation. <clears throat> Uh, I'd like to take a second and okay. uh, just say thank you to Connie for the time and service that you put in uh, to our school district. And I know uh, the impact you've had on my family's life with Monica, former educator, and Morgan, a former educator. Um, just the way they spoke about you whenever I was looking at doing this, um, especially with Monica knowing you and uh, just encouraging me to to come on the board with you, with you on there. And and then for me, the impact you've had on me as a board member and how you handle yourself and the questions you ask and uh, it's just been a joy to be part of uh, the last few years. And um, again, thank you for your time and you're truly gonna be missed. I'm, I got to know you, we talk about babies. families, babies, grandbabies, dogs, you know, yeah. and uh, I uh, just want to thank you for that, and I, I look forward to continuing to stay in touch. It's It's been a blessing to be on this board and to work with Salem Spring Schools. So I'm hoping that my next step is volunteering somewhere, <laughs> which you can't do as a board member. Right. So I'm looking for a place. <laughs> I, oh, I see a hand. I, think it'll come <laughs> I see two hands. <laughs> I think it'll come and I'm serious fast. about that. I would love to, to support awesome. in some way. Well, and I'll say as former neighbors, yeah. and you were principal of my kids, and all the years that you've given to the district, and now to the board, and what you've done 
with us on the board has been outstanding work and like Travis said about the questions from the education side of it that's going to be a huge void mm -hmm. for us but I think you've taught us even still teaching te taught us some things for us to think about and to ask about and and you will be sorely missed and that we appreciate you. you and thank you so much we miss you all too so I guess that brings us I can't to follow up what they said. So <laughs> I take it personal. It's because of me. Yeah. <laughs> no. Thank you so much for mm -hmm. all that you've done. Didn't she teach you? I don't think so. <laughs> no, she avoided me then. <laughs> <too. Exactly. laughs> so I'll make a motion to approve Connie Matchell's resignation from the school board. I think I need to read this, don't I? Yeah. Not yet. Second it. Oh, yeah. Second. A second. <laughs> just go second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah, I guess it passes. I think we need to give Connie a round of applause. So after feel, feel free to come on a Thursday, second Thursday. I, I just might do that. Just show up. <laughs> so after tonight, we have a vacancy on our school board, and uh, state law lays out how a vacancy on the school board will be uh, filled uh, during the middle of a term, and state law is ACA six thirteen six eleven, and it says that the school board will appoint a school board member and that that person who is appointed by the school board will serve in that role until the next regular election and then they will be up for election uh, at that time to fulfill the remainder of the, the term of Connie's term and so our board's task at this point is to appoint another school board member in Connie's stead um, we need to establish a process for how that's going to take place. The law says that that has to be done within 30 days. The appointment has to be done within 30 days. If it is not done within 30 days, then the quorum court of Benton County uh, appoints the school board member. So we would like to do that ourselves, I would think. Um, so we have had a process in the past that we have used for this process, for, for this situation. And I, I have provided one of you that, uh, that sample motion for how to establish that process. If you would like to amend that, that's fine. Uh, but the, the motion as, as presented actually complies with the state law. So I would like to motion to approve the following process for appointing the school board member to fill vacant zone two position in the Salem Springs School Board following ASBA protocol. One, the board will appoint a board member to fill the vacant zone number two position in accordance with ACA 613-611. Interested parties must notify the superintendent's office of their interest. They must also submit a resume and cover letter stating why they are seeking the position and why they believe they should be chosen for the position. Notification and supporting documents must be submitted to the superintendent's office by 4.30 p.m. November 2nd, 2021. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The November 2nd date is a little over two weeks from now, and that will give us the opportunity of compiling those applications together and getting them back to you all individually to review before our next board meeting, when it will be your task to appoint someone from that group. Okay. That is all I have. Okay. I move that we adjourn. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Maybe a journal.